I'm Taylor Fish. And I'm Krista O'Donnell. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. And let's see what CSF students have to say about this recent heat wave. It's way too hot out here. I'm not really used to the heat. Um, I really wish it was cooler like it was a couple weeks ago, but hopefully it goes down soon. So what are you going to do when it gets like hotter in the summertime? <laughs> Go to the beach, probably just swimming all the time, or just stay indoors. I think. Actually, I think right now it kind of feels okay. I walked out of class, surprised, and it's not as bad as I Now let's hear from Tani with the latest weather report. I feel like summer, but com this coming week is going to feel like spring. The current temperature in Fullerton is 86 degrees and it kind of feels like 82. The low is going to be 63 degrees after the sun sets 611 tonight. There's a light cool breeze traveling at about 7 miles per hour and 11% humidity. Now let's take it look at your temperatures for the week. Temperatures are partly cloudy in the 80s. It looks like winds is going to drop down a little bit to 79 degrees and the sun will be coming out Friday at 82 degrees so the clouds are going to be going away. And in the evening, the dark temperature in the evening around dark temperatures are really going to start to drop. There's a cool breeze with the temperatures in the low 60s and high 50s. Currently in Northern California, the temperatures have dropped in San Francisco and Southern California, Los Angeles is still looking pretty warm at 89 degrees. As for national forecasts, the snow might not melt, the snow might have melted over the weekend, but winter's coming back in the Midwest. So put your winter coats back on. The cold front begins in Southern Canada area and it's gonna be cutting through the East, the east Coast and looking at 51 degrees um, as for the south, temperatures will stay pretty mild at the low 70s and 80s. Dallas at 77 and Miami at 80 degrees. But for the rest of the week, expect cloudy weather across the board and some precipitation. That's your weather forecast for the day. Have a great night. Back to you guys. Looking for a place to study, here's Shauna Hudson live at the TSU for Midterm Madness this week. Midterm Madness has set in here at Cal State Fullerton as people study for midterms all around the TSU. There's places available inside with AC or outside if you prefer a little bit of heat. It's midterm season at CSUF and the TSU is packed with last minute crammers. They held Float to Success, a Root Your Float giveaway in the courtyard at noon today to keep students cool as they study. Tomorrow will be tea time, a complimentary tea and sweets event taking place at 2 p.m. in the TSU Breezeway. Finishing off this week's events will be Lightning Bowl and Pizza in the Underground at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. There are a lot of places to study with friends or a more quiet area to get everything done. Charging stations are also located in the Underground for laptops and cell phones to keep you going for the week. And two LAPD officers are making headlines today for unrelated offenses. This morning, a Los Angeles police officer was charged with hum human smuggling after Border Patrol agents found a man hiding in his car. Saturday at the Ote Mesa border crossing, Carlos Curiel Quisada Jr., a 10-year-old veteran assigned to the Hollywood station and his female passenger, Angelica Godinez, were stopped for a routine vehicle inspection. And during the search border patrol, officers examined the car with a Z-Portal x-ray machine and found Antisano Perez Avalas in the cargo area of the vehicle. Quisada and Godinez were subsequently arrested and each faced single counts of, quote, bringing an illegal alien without presentation, end quote. Earlier today, police issued an arrest warrant for Henry Salas, a rookie LAPD officer, for the murder of Salome Rodriguez of Ontario. I can't see that. Pomona police alleged that Salas shot Rodriguez multiple times in the torso following a fist fight that occurred between the two. And Solis was off duty at the time and has been missing since he was reported as a person of interest. Solis is considered to be armed and dangerous and may be driving a 1992 Ford pickup truck, brown or tan in color, with California license plate 4J79703. If you see a car matching this description or have any information to his whereabouts, you are urged to call 911. And if you think your car is safe with the valet, you might want to double check that after hearing this story. Josh Gell and Jody Abadie were leaving Joe's Crab Shack in Newport Beach to find their car missing. The valet accidentally gave their 2014 Mazda sedan to someone else. 
The valet went up to the couple and said, I don't know how to say this, but we gave your car to someone else. And Jody started laughing and thought it was a joke. But once they realized it wasn't a joke, they were shocked and upset. For the couple, it's not just about the car, but it's the contents that are gone. Inside the car was Abadie's 16-year-old son's hat, which was given to him by his father, who died almost two years ago from cancer. They have filed a police report, but the car has not been found. And March is Women's History Month. It's time to reflect on the accomplishments of women. But it's also time to remember the struggles that continue. Our reporter, Kimberly O'Neill, tackles the story from the two different fronts. First, she talks with a local entrepreneur who juggles success with being a new mom. I started back, I saw um, a friend of mine showed me a gel that is used in mattresses. And um, I was really curious. I, I, it was really sticky and I loved the way it felt. And I have problems with my feet. And, um, and I know that women inject silicone into the balls of their feet to create more padding. And I thought, gosh, you know, this would feel great on my feet. So I just kind of researched it and uh, started experimenting with different shapes. And then I applied it to my foot and it felt wonderful. And then I thought, well, maybe this is something other women might enjoy. Officially, it started in 2011. Um, before then, I was working on, re you know, doing the molds and patterns, and so that took about three years. I did a lot of focus groups with women um, to see what worked, what didn't work. Very instrumental because I asked him if he could get an appointment to see the doctors for the Marines, and um, it took him about six months. He made a few calls because my husband was in the military. He was a, a Navy pilot. And um, because he kind of could speak the lingo and, and do that, he was able to maneuver and get an appointment. So we met with about 10 doctors and uh, they love the product. And uh, so now it's, it's with the Marines nationwide. What motivates me now a lot is that I have a daughter and I want to be a good role model, model for her and show her that we can, as women, do whatever we want to do. We can start a business and we can go for it. Um, so she's a big motivator for me. Uh, you know, before her, of course, I wanted to excel myself, um, but um, having her and just seeing the... One struggle that women continue to focus attention on is pay inequality in the workplace. Kimberly continues her in-depth story with a guest in the studio. Kimberly? Thanks, Taylor. I'm here with Elizabeth Munoz from Cal State Fullerton's Career Center to discuss about women's inequality. Thank, uh, you, thank for you for being here with us, Elizabeth. Thank you for having um, Before we begin, let's look at Patricia Arquette's um, speech at the 87th Academy Awards. To every woman who gave birth, to every taxpayer and citizen of this nation, we have fought for everybody else's equal rights. It's our time to have wage equality once and for all, and equal rights for women in the United States of America. So after seeing the video, what is your initial reaction to this? Well, um, inequality is definitely uh, an area of much concern, you know, in today's, um, you know, um, job market. Primarily, you know, as I'm working with students, you know, it's definitely bringing more awareness not only to students about this, primarily female students, but also employers. And I think that's, you know, as an advocate to encourage um, both ends to better understand, you know, what is equal pay um, and how to better provide those um, salaries to um, employees just all across the board. Um, so it is definitely something um, of great concern and great awareness um, as we look at providing service to our students um, all across the board. So why do you think that is that we're still in 2015 and females aren't being equally paid in the workforce? I believe that part of it is, again, the awareness on, on the employers and, you know, um, they know that there's wage and employment um, laws in, set in place um, and oftentimes it's, you know, as they look at ways to providing um, the salaries and, um, you know, making a profit, especially for profits, I think it, it, it definitely varies across the board in various industries and various type of positions. And so um, I think, as I mentioned, part of it is the unaware 
uniqueness of what needs to be done um, and, you know, in case for employees to better be aware, especially female employees, of ways that they could initiate those conversations with their supervisors, their managers, you know, to, um, to negotiate maybe equal pay throughout. So um, you're, you're a Latina. So um, Fox had stated um, statistically that um, Latinas in the workforce only get paid 54 cents for every dollar a man makes. So what is your opinion regarding that? Um, definitely uh, it's, it's unfortunate that you know, those, those salaries are definitely vary depending on um, you know, Latina women, African American women, uh, in comparison Asian American women. Um, it is uh, definitely very discerning to know that you know, we are paid you know, that low in comparison to others. Um, you know, overall, uh, that awareness I think is definitely something that needs to be um, brought upon you know, the light and, and various components of um, us going out there, educating you know, other Latinas, mentoring I think too, um, and me mentoring you know, Latina female students that are getting ready to go out there into the workforce, informing them of this and um, better providing them a, a basic foundation, you know, how to best address those issues, you know, as they go out into the marketplace, into the job workforce. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and discussing this issue. Um, back to Krista in the studio. This past weekend was the last weekend of the 44th Annual Festival of Wales. Alicia Machuca has more on the celebration. Dana Point celebrates their 44th Annual Whale Fest this March as the majestic California gray whales make their yearly migration through the beautiful waters of the OC. This incredible 5,000 mile migration from Alaska to Mexico brings the whales straight through the heart of Dana Point and brings out nature lovers, whale watchers, and sea enthusiasts alike to witness this spectacular event. I'm here mostly for the whale festival and just to enjoy some sun and breeze and be a little, little icy. There's a full calendar of festivities dedicated in the gray whale's honor. There are Grunian run races, a whale and dolphin movie festival, a clam chowder cook-off, a vintage boat and car show, block parties, a parade, and concerts on the water. Came across it by chance, but we figured we better come out and have a good time. And it's good, it's good. And it's not just about fun in the sun, but for those that want to learn more about Dana Point and its sea life, there are educational activities and conservation efforts for all ages. You can take part in a marine mammal lecture, attend one of the many art shows or arts and craft lessons, enroll your child in a free kids fishing clinic, take a walking tour of Dana Point, or attend a beach cleanup event and help keep Headlands Conservation Park pristine for future generations of whale watchers. And while most attendees come to enjoy whale fest on land, there are just as many people trying to meet sea creatures firsthand. Um, yeah. Kayaking and boogie boarding and swimming. swimming. I just love animals. I love ocean. I love to surf. Swimming, surfing, paddle boarding, and kayaking give everyone an opportunity to explore the whale's natural habitat and have some wet and wild fun while doing it. Every year, every year, wouldn't miss it. Why wouldn't you miss it? Oh, because it's just, it, look at this place, it's amazing. <laughs> So if you're looking for a whale of a good time, then look no further than the annual Festival of the Whales, where locals and tourists alike gather together to celebrate these majestic creatures and to catch the tail end of their annual migration. Reporting for OC News, here at Dana Point, I'm Alicia Machuca. And several people in Kansas were sickened after eating Bluebell ice cream. Our own health expert, Maribel Marquez, is here with all of the details. Three people are dead and two people are sickened after eating Bluebell ice cream at Kansas Hospital. The, the Lysteria outbreak responsible for three deaths in the past year has been linked to Bluebell, Bluebell ice cream products. The company issued a recall but said many of the, its products are not affected. Health officials say the ice cream was made on a single production line at one of Bluebell's plants in Texas and was probably exposed to the Lysteria bacteria while it was still in liquid form. According to the State Department of Health, the hospital did not know of the contam contamina contamination when the patients were served the ice cream. Today, the FDA warned consumers that if they have these products at home, to throw them out. On another note, ads promoting smoking have been banned for decades. A new study suggests advertisements for electronic cigarettes still make people want to smoke. 
Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania had the participants watch e-cig advertisements and ask them questions about their smoking urges and behaviors. The result indicated that people that the images of people smoking e-cigs or vaping can create cravings for a real cigarette. Researchers also found that former smokers who watched e-cigs ads had less confidence that they could permanently overcome their tobacco habit. Another study suggests that raising the minimum age to buy cigarettes could result in fewer premature deaths. The Institute of Medicine reports that says that setting the minimum age to 21 could mean 50,000 fewer lung cancer deaths from those born between 2000 and 2019. Most states re require consumers to be 18 to buy cigarettes. New York City raised its legal age to 21. The FDA has re requested the study, but it cannot raise the age limit nationwide. It is currently a work in progress. And that's all, what we, and that's all that we have for today in health. Back to you, ladies. Continue, continuing our look at health news, we turn our attention to chronic pain. Many Americans suffer from pain that just doesn't go away. Doctors are working on ways to help reduce pain without reusing prescription meds. Tani McCoy is here to discuss unique ways to tr treat ongoing pain. If you suffer with fibromyalgia, migraines, or chronic back pain, you'll want to hear what our guest has to say today. I have Dr. Tan Dr. Daniel Tugut with us discussing chronic pain and what you can do about it. Thank you, Daniel, for Hey, thanks coming. for having me, Tony. Thank you for coming. You know, you say you have a unique approach to chronic pain. Can you explain to me? Sure. There's an epidemic of chronic pain in this country. And when you're diagnosed with a chronic condition like fibromyalgia or rheumatoid arthritis, there is no hope for you. That's what chronic means. You're not going to get better. So if I keep doing the same thing that everybody else has done, I'm going to get the same results. So you have to have a, a unique approach. Conventional medicine fails with chronic pain for one main reason. They do not know what causes chronic pain. Okay, you got me there. I'll bite. Explain to me what causes chronic pain. It's a very simple concept that I have, and that is that all pain, whether it's a stub toe or the chronic pain of fibromyalgia, is caused by a simple process called inflammation. That's a series of chemical events in the body that happen when you're injured or stressed. Now, when inflammation happens in the joints and the muscles and the nerves, you can't see it, but if it happens in the skin, then then you can see it, and you can see the, the inflammation, like in this picture oh, right gosh, here. That's awful. That's the heartbreak of psoriasis, and so we see inflammation is redness, swelling, heat, and of course pain. So in this case, we can see it. So the name of the game is you've got to get rid of inflammation. Now the, the conventional medical approach is to use anti-inflammatory drugs like Aleve, Advil, ibuprofen, and in this case prednisone, which obviously didn't work. My approach is much simpler and different. Instead of adding a chemical that's an anti-inflammatory, my discovery is that these chronic conditions are caused by specific pro-inflammatory substances that are also swallowed, and that's in foods and food additives. So the solution to putting out a fire is not to pour more water on it, but to stop pouring the gasoline on the fire. So we have to stop these pro-inflammatory substances. Okay, so how'd you make it go away? So here's this case, same case, 62 days later. Uh, the book I wrote is called Chronic Pain Gone 90 Days. It takes about 90 days to heal, sometimes quicker. And so we did this by eliminating the specific pro-inflammatory substance, which in his case was a protein called casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. It's the main protein found in milk and dairy foods. Okay, you got me on that one, milk. Okay, yes. they've been telling us all these years that milk's good for our body. Why are you telling me it's not? Right, well, mainly the people who told us that are the ones who sell it. But the bottom line is cow's milk is specifically designed to be the perfect nutrient for baby cows. So it's one of the substances that causes chronic inflammatory diseases, and that's what solved this case right here. We eliminated all milk and dairy food from his diet, and without using any drugs or any medication, the body healed itself, which the body will do. Inflammation is healing, and so when it runs its course and is not interfered with by something like casein, then uh, healing happens. And so there's lots of substances or a few substances that can cause chronic inflammatory diseases. So it's a matter of figuring out what they are and changing the diet very specifically. Well, what's another one? Another. Well, I can bum you out on this one, but the most powerful cause of pain is chocolate. No, I More than you. anything else in the world. There's no way. Yeah. It sees the soul of chocolate does. <laughs> I know, it does. And it's, it's, a, it's the best tasting food on the planet. But after 30 years of practice of watching, finding the on-off switch for pain, chocolate is the most powerful cause of pain. 
So you're telling me just by eliminating my diet, if I have chronic pain, it will go away? Right. The solution is to find out what the pro-inflammatory substance or substances are and eliminate them. And chronic pain will be gone within 90 days. You know what? I really appreciate this. It's kind of inspiring. I mean, just have to change the diet and whatnot. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel Tugud, for coming sure. on our show. All right. So there you have it. Change your diet. Change your health. You can read more with Dr. Tugud's book, Chronic Pain, Gone in 90 Days. Down, you can download it on your Kindle, Nook, iBooks, Google Apps. It sounds almost too good to be true. You can, meet, you can get more information by going to Dr. Tugood's website page at www.danieltugood.com. Thank you so much and back to you guys in the studio. And still to come, find out what the buzz is about on the latest Cinderella movie. And later, how to gain more attention by taking the best selfie in sports to come. Rugby team hopes to make a statement. This study abroad program includes a four day trip to Rome. Welcome to the Cal State Forge in the report. State Fullerton's own radio station located in the basement of Public Library. Students can stop by and pick up the notification during operating hours. Anyone who has a computer and internet can listen to us www.titanradio.org. A lot of people who want to pursue TV and film usually start out in radio, so it's always a great opportunity. Bippity boppity boo, a live action fairy tale reigns over the box office this weekend, and we've got all the details. Here's Rachel with entertainment. A princess proves to be the belle of the box office this weekend. Disney's live action fairy tale Cinderella was the top earner by a long shot at the movies. The film starring Lily James, Richard Madden, and Kate Blanchett raked in more than $70 million. In second place was Run All Night. Liam Neeson's latest action flick, earning an estimated 11 million bucks. Kingsman, The Secret Service, starring Colin Firth and Samuel L. Jackson, came in third, bringing in an estimated $6.2 million in its fifth weekend in theaters. Justin Bieber offered himself as the target of the annual Comedy Central, where he took some jabs from comedians and other celebrities on Saturday, including Kevin Hart, Shaquille O'Neal, and Snoop Dogg. Once the show airs on March 30th, viewers can expect to see satirical references about Bieber's ex, Selena Gomez, and the adorable monkey that he adopted, then abandoned. In spite of being criticized on Saturday, Bieber was able to keep a smile on his face when he celebrated his 21st birthday just hours after the roast at a new club in Vegas. Andy Samberg is taking back his act from Brooklyn to Hollywood. The actor, writer, and comedian has been chosen to host the, this year's pr Primetime Emmy Awards. Sandberg won an Emmy for Saturday Night Live and a Golden Globe for his starring role on TV's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The 67th Primetime Emmy Awards will air live from the Nokia Theater in Los Angeles on September 20th. Nominations will be announced July 16th. That's all for today in entertainment. Back to you, ladies. Kelsey reports on the Cinderella movie that came out over the weekend. Movie theaters have been packed with kids and adults of all ages this weekend. But what movie are the critics talking about? None other than the Disney live-action Cinderella. Viewers are impressed with how well the movie followed the books. I think it followed the original story better than a lot of them do. Disney's live-action remake of animated classic Cinderella earned $70.1 million to grab the top spot at the weekend box office. 
fans are connecting more to Cinderella in this movie because it is a live action and not an animated film. Kids are even dressing up as Cinderella to get in the spirit of the movie. I think that she was really nice and like she just was happy even when people treated her bad. She didn't care. This is my favorite Cinderella movie. It's my second favorite all-time Cinderella movie. They say this is the best Cinderella yet, but you'll have to be your own judge. Here is a sneak peek of this well-known fairy tale. I don't mean to hurry you, but you really haven't got long, Ella. That's better. They're made of glass. And they're really comfortable. Remember, the magic will only last so long. Won't you tell me your name? My name is... At the last stroke of midnight, the spell will be broken. And all will return to what it was before. Cinderella, are you looking for this? There must be quite a story to go with it. Won't you tell me? I have to see her again. I can't drive. I'm a goose. What? elections go underway tomorrow through Thursday. Janet is sitting with Joanna who is kind enough to join us to tell us more about ASI and about her position she is running for. Hello everyone. Yeah, we're here with three candidates on studio that will be talking about us our, about their position um, with the boards of directors. Hi, my name is Joanna Solis. I'm running for the ASI Board of Directors for the College of Communications. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Medina. I am running for the Board of Directors for the College of Business and Economics. Hi, my name is Layla Dadaboy. I'm running for the same position for the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit of what Board of Directors means for all of you? Board of Directors for me means the student representatives. So what I really stand for is representation, involvement, communication, and awareness. And I feel like that's the role of the Board of Directors. As Board of Directors, I would like to increase the communication not only within the Mahalo College of Business, but with the university as a whole and continue with events such as Magic Johnson and Orange Madness. For me, it means to connect to the students and show them what ASI is all about and all the opportunities that are available to them within ASI. Thank you. And on that note, can you tell me a little bit about why students should go out and vote? Um, last year, the voter percentage was 8% of all of our students. The Board of Directors actually makes so many decisions that impact all of our students, and so it's important for our students to have a say in that. Students should go out and vote just to have their voice heard and see the representatives that are ultimately going to represent their college. I think college is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and the students have the chance to have a say in that, and I think they should really take this opportunity to really capitalize on that. Thank you for that. There you have it. Elections run from Wednesday to Thursday, and students are allowed to vote online or um, pass by any of the voting booths on campus. You can vote at vote.fullerton.edu. Thank you. Back to you, ladies. When spring comes to Washington, more tourists do too. Among the most popular destinations, the free Sm Smithsonian museums like air and space and natural history. But a recent update on, but a recent update to visitor policies is getting some attention, an existing ban on tripods and monopods inside now extends to those popular selfie sticks. The recent selfie stick boom has led to similar policies at London's National Gallery and the Metropolitan Museum of, the, of, art, uh, of Modern Art in New York. Smithsonian's press secretary says it's about protecting a museum's collection. Elizabeth Merritt is founding director of the Center for the Future of Museums at the American Alliance of Museums. She says for those museums that only recently come around to allowing photography, the selfie stick may be a bit of a stretch. According to museum personnel, it is not safe to be waving a selfie stick around. They suggest to do it yourself. News. I'm Taylor Fish. And I'm Krista O'Donnell. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton.